Let's make a present. A playtime video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to another special Lemon Amiga Extended Play Guide and Review. In this week's show, we'll be checking out Enemy 2 Missing in Action, released through Anachronia in 2013. The game was co-designed by Andre Vudrich and David Rayscombe and it takes place aboard, well no not a graphics card but actually a spaceship as you can see on the cover art and you can see the credits there in the game. So what we can do is press F10 and bring up a config where we can switch on and off the music and the sound effects and also we can check out the monitor with 50 or 60 hertz being available. And so, returning to that title screen, let's check out level 1, let's press fire, and checking this game out, we find not a space intro, which would have appeared on the original game, but this is the sequel, and so what we get is a typed message. We are aboard the spaceship Chromol 2, which is adrift in deep outer space, and she has managed to escape the vastly superior enemy only by a fraction of an inch right as the space giant's cannons were about to take her out. So the Cromwell's crew activated the hyperjump and now they're all in a new and entirely unknown part of space far away from the Earth. So aboard the Cromwell 2 are the surviving civilians as well as our allies the pirates and the evil Orlocks. The main enemy, the Tushahis, have lost this battle, but there may be a few survivors hiding out in the small sectors, so Team A will advance with a handful of our friendly pirates and finish off that enemy. But we are worried about our friendly ally Bum Bum, so the pirate's leader in fact is badly injured, and the last thing we need is for him to be lost in battle so you'll have to go out and find him and apparently you can press the help button if you need assistance with a solution to a problem and the pirates are now advancing into the sector with the aim of trying to find their leader Bum Bum and so you'll have to join them and try to fight the enemy. At the beginning of every level we get to see a little information about ourselves and also a position on that spaceship and so we start in there and we'll have to find our way around and we also have a certain time limit which is different on every single level so in this case we have 600 seconds with a basic pistol and our mission is to kill all the enemies and of course survive that mission. Enemy 2 missing in action, we play as an action fighter and it's our job to roam around these landscapes and in the first level it's our job to blow away anything which poses a threat and so you won't find any enemies at the beginning, this is just a tutorial to get you used to those control methods and all you have to do is walk off a platform and he will fall from any height and also you just need to push up and he will jump to any high platform which is absolutely terrific. We've also just found our ammo box and that means we can load up our gun and the info panel at the bottom of the screen is very self-explanatory. We can virtually guess all the items that we can see. We 
can also push up on the controller and that will activate a special waypoint and now if we die we will simply return back to that waypoint that is an incredibly handy feature because most of these levels the player will have to learn and master by trial and error a little bit like a Prince of Persia game And yes, this game does contain some blood and gore, or at least some red pixels floating around the screen. And you will see a lot of red coloured pixels in this review, because a lot of things will die. Those are the friendly pirates who've just killed those guys and on the very first level it's essential to let those pirates mop up the enemy. On every single level we'll be given an objective and in this case it's our objective to kill all the enemy on this level so it's better if you let the pirates do it for us and simply hanging around means that they can jump ahead and hopefully clear the way for us. Health is represented by the figure in the far left corner and you can see when that thing is completely red and that means that we've taken some damage. And when it goes completely red again that means our shield has worn down and we're going to die. Luckily we can find health packs and we can also find switches which you can see on the floor and of course it requires using your brain and letting those pirates make those kills and hopefully the more you play these levels the easier they are because you've memorised what you're supposed to do. just one alien to find and our exit are seemingly open all we have to do is to find that exit and it provides a handy map as you can see and this is the exit bridge all we have to do is to get across it if you fail to press up to jump then unfortunately you will die and sometimes you cannot fall down some gaps because they are simply too far and you may find spikes down there anyway so when that happens you'll have to respawn and you'll have to try that level all over again and hopefully this time you'll have memorised what to do and luckily in this game the enemies stay dead and that means that we get a body count and it's great to see those bodies lying around that level Learning to work as a team is an essential part of some of this game, but as you will see not all of this game is just like this. This part reminds me of Alien 3 on the Amiga, and it's certainly got the blood and the guts, but as we shall see later on, it does develop into a puzzler and alternate between the action and the adventure. So this time let's tackle that lethal bridge again, and let's see if we can't get over it this time, and make our way towards that exit. At 
the end of every mission, you'll give them the debrief. And of course, our thanks a lot and a pat on the back for all of that and for surviving. And so it's on to the next mission where we find that the trail of Bum Bum has unfortunately dried up. And so we'll have to use our skills to navigate another level. And the game even counts how many kills that we've had. In this case, we've died twice and killed 28 of those enemies. And we've also fled one time by pressing escape. You can see the deaths on offer, blown up, swallowed, bitten, trampled. And those are really funny statistics when you've completed this game. And as if that wasn't enough, the game actually recorded our last play and we'll replay it from our last restart point in slow motion so that we can gloat over the action that we've just played through. Just like Benefactor, every single level can be played individually and so when we return to that title screen we'll be given a password, in this case Pest, which we can enter at any point and if we end up dying on these levels, which we will repeatedly, we can come back and return to this level and try again a little bit later. And you can see the story is text driven, which isn't so bad and well it doesn't give us too many hints as to how to complete this second level of a very 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 long game. Among the many games which have atmosphere on the Amiga, this certainly counts among those because of that haunting music and you can even hear the soft footfalls of the footsteps as you walk, which is actually softer on this carpet. Every alternate level plays like a puzzle game and in this case we'll have to avoid ground guns and disable things by blowing up little bits of the scenery and you can see I blew up that glass and that disabled an electric field which blocked an exit somewhere and it's our job to find that and yes you can see all you need to do is to push up and the guy will simply push up to the next platform and unlike flashback and another world that's certainly much easier and it can be as long as you memorize how to do that because otherwise you will simply walk off that platform. Because this game is all about platforming, you will really be forgiven for thinking that these are leaps of faith. But, just in case you did think that, you can actually use the characteristics of the game. If you wander to the edge, the guy will look down and he will report whether it's safe or not. In this case, he shakes his head and that means that he's not safe and I would have died if I'd have gone in that direction. Now that we have the ammo, the second part of this mission reveals itself, and that is a snake with a huge set of teeth. Which will gobble us up if we wander anywhere near that thing, but luckily we can use our gun, and that will reduce one from the counter at the bottom of the screen of the snakes that we have to destroy on this level. Let's 
just memorise our position before we venture any further and let's just hope that we're going in the right direction and there aren't too many pits of death but they are there, particularly on this level and sometimes the only way you'll discover those is to fall in there and with 11, well sorry, 10 of those snakes to avoid and yes, sometimes they do disappear once triggered then all we need to do is explore this level and we've managed to find a vibrations tracker which will alert us if there are any hidden snakes on that screen. <laughs> Unfortunately, this level contains one very important dead-end scenario, or at least a one-way situation, in which case, if you fall down here before the time, then unfortunately you'll have to abort the game and try that again. So, this time let's try that whole level again, and this time, when we reach the checkpoint, let's save our progress. <laughs> Just like a Rick Dangerous game, this game also contains hidden traps which you'll have to memorise. Just like Rick Dangerous and even Lara Croft will have to use our weapons to blow things up and in this case we'll have to blow this away and that gives us an elevator to rise through the level. <laughs> I wouldn't say the controls are bad in this game, but certainly they take some getting used to and you can see in this playthrough, or at least one of the playthroughs, I simply forgot to push in the correct direction and got eaten and you'll die in this game mercilessly a large number of times until you find out where you've made a mistake before and so it's very much trial and error. <laughs> You won't find too many extra items dotted around the landscape but here we find a couple of grenades and even on this screen we'll have to watch out. What we are not supposed to do is to collect the first one and then try to get the second one because, of course... What we are supposed to do instead is to collect the first one and then shoot the door and then hopefully that grenade will fall down and the worm will gobble it up and that's the no way back situation down there and we have to destroy every single worm on this level and you can see to the left we've missed one and so we'll have to figure out how to kill that one when we can. For the moment we'll inspect our damage and hopefully we can get out of that no way back and let's just save our progress in case we get eaten. <laughs> The audible noise and the flashing triangle above the snake means that there is still one active in that room and it's still flashing even though we've got rid of a snake. <laughs> This is still only level 2 of the game and it's quite hard, you'll have to memorise your way around it and of course professionals can run around this game and novices will be struggling. 
but you can see the teleport is waiting for us, but the flashing triangle means that we're going to be attacked, and knowing where that is is hard to predict. <laughs> Luckily, we can always continue from where we left off on that last checkpoint, and at least we get to restart, and it means that we'll have to get through certain sections to get through to the next checkpoint, as long as we have time on that clock. And that's great, it means we can explore these levels and we're not transported all the way back to the start, and as long as we remember certain things, it means we can follow a formula, hopefully, and to make our way through from checkpoint to checkpoint. So as you can see, I spent quite some time on this particular puzzle, and so let's just speed up that footage just a little bit, and let's just speed our way through and see if we can make any further progress, and yes, this thing did take a few retries and a few different records even of this very game and I'd say this game is very hard and even people who really love the first game, Enemy Tempest of Violence, will find this very hard and so it's a challenge even from level 2 but don't forget we'll find some more running and gunning action after this so it's definitely worth it and that's the encouragement to play through to that next level but I'm not very good at Prince of Persia type games, so I'm struggling with this one. To some extent, I think sometimes the puzzles are a little bit too hard, and especially in this early stage of the game, they could have been slightly easier. And there are a number of ways actually to trigger this snake, but what I'm going to do is try to pray, and try to pray my way out of the situation, and well, that could work, and maybe it will, maybe it won't. But let's just see, let's just see if we can get there on this particular try. To make matters worse on this particular trap, if you haven't killed enough snakes by the time you get here, there won't be an exit ladder to elevate us up, and so even if we do manage to trigger that snake, and we get the snake count all the way down, unfortunately it won't give us any means of exit, and so yet again we find ourselves at another dead end. I tried to complete this level at least three times, and so this is the third time, and so let's see, well at least I managed to trigger the snake, and that means that finally we should be able to get through the level to another checkpoint. <laughs> You can see I'm hesitating because there is a snake in this room and I don't know where it is. So as soon as I jump down, I'm going to get eaten. Or in this particular case, I find an automatic gun with an unlimited supply of ammunition, which is not very helpful with only 132 seconds left on the clock. And so, unfortunately, I'm going to have to die and try that all over again. The game even tricks us into following a different path and this takes us all the way back in the level and we can fall through that hole and take shortcuts now that we've got rid of those snakes. And in this case, well, we're trying different ways to get around that century gun. None of those are having any great effect, it seems. There are a 
number of ways to complete this particular puzzle and I find one of the ways is to trigger the snake and that will absorb the bullets and that means we can exit that screen where we actually find the exit. Even the way to the exit is guarded so you'll have to master that as well and that means unfortunately with no time left and basically dead we've failed to repel the Stemos snakes and we've failed to survive and so even with the later playthrough I actually find the exit gate which is absolutely fantastic but if we fail to destroy all of the snakes on the level unfortunately we cannot complete it and we'll have to try it all over again. In order to get all the snakes on the level we have to go all the way back to this point, this hole in the floor and by waggling the joystick in the up and down direction we can swap between the gun and the hand grenades of which we have one and by pressing fire we can lob that down that hole. <laughs> So this is my fourth try to try to complete this second level and when I managed to reach the level I'm highly glad I did. So whilst you see me rushing through now trying to get to the end now that I've killed the snake which I failed to get before hopefully I can get through it. And so let's fast forward through the tunnel and let's just talk about this game. Enemy 2 Missing in Action is based on Enemy Tempest of Violence which was released in 1997 by Andre Vudrich who is based in Winter There, Switzerland, in Northern Switzerland and Winter There, well I'm sure it's always Winter There and definitely the original Enemy Tempest the Violence game was brilliant but 16 years later in 2013 Andre was approached by a fan of the game and they worked together to create a sequel which worked in direct line with the original and continued that story. The inspiration was David Rayscombe and David Rayscombe basically created all the pirates levels and Andre created these levels i.e. the puzzlers which all take place on a gigantic spaceship and this game was originally released for 15 euros. It was designed and coded by Andre and David. Andre did most of the code and they both handled the graphics. So it was definitely an Andre Vudrich, David Rayscombe game. And there aren't that many games from Switzerland and there are not many games of this calibre which was released in 2013. And there are not many gamers who would play this anymore and not many reviewers either. But this being a modern game I think it's absolutely fantastic and is worthy sequel to the original. In an attempt to try to be more factual in these reviews I actually contacted Andre Vudrich last year and he kindly gave us an interview at Lemon Amiga. So if you go to the game section and click on Andre you'll find an interview about him and in there you'll find all his thoughts about all the enemy games and you can also contact him on the official website and also on his official forum. And finally we've made it through level 2 of the 28 levels in this game and you may be surprised to learn that the original enemy Tempest to violence had 34 levels the very last level being the very hardest in the game with all the hardest puzzles but 28 levels in this game is enough to keep players going and with this kind of replay value we know that we are heading in towards another pirate attack and this time we'll have to use our guns and run and there are no more puzzles to solve it's just a case of saving 
the pirate leader, Boom Boom. Let's check out level 3 and as you're about to see we are under attack straight away so yet again this game has a lot of replay value. I think the graphics are good, maybe not as good as the original enemy because the original enemy had copper backgrounds which made the wallpaper textures amazing but I think the sound effects on offer are great and the music is very atmospheric, the story doesn't really add much and most players can hold down the fire and skip the storyline as I'm attempting to do at the moment but I think that this game has a lot on offer so without me talking all over it, let's just check out that third level, uninterrupted, and let's see how far we can get with it. So whilst you see me trying to fruitlessly follow these civilians in an attempt to find the way out, well I'll just tell you that there were no scores for this game because nobody reviewed it because this was released in 2013, but the current score on the Lemon Amiga website is 68%, which is in the realms of very good, but unfortunately the original Tempest got a much higher score at 80%. Remember in the first game we had to rescue hostages and there are no hostages to rescue here and they complained about the graphics but in the later levels this game actually has some brilliant graphics it's just that the average player will be struggling to get there.
note, this is a relatively new game. I think that there is enough here to be memorable, and it was memorable enough for me to review, and of course contact that author. So if you like this review, then of course leave a comment, and I hope you can check this game out for yourself, and hopefully survive longer than I did. And I think apart from a few bugs in the game, it's very well done, and I'd certainly recommend it. Thank you once again, and I hope to see you again with another play guide sometime soon. Thank you.